Hello and welcome back to the Cybersecurity Crash Course for Small and Mid-Sized Organizations. Do you know the actual average cost of a security incident, a breach, or ransomware for a small or mid-sized organization? There's a lot of numbers thrown around, like in the Verizon report and the cost of a data breach report that comes out every year, that is all tailored for large organizations. But do you know how much it usually costs a small organization? We're going to talk about that later in the lesson, so be sure you stick around because you're going to want to know that. This is Lesson 9 in the 12-part Cybersecurity Crash Course. If you have not watched the previous lessons, be sure that you go back and you take a look at them. There's lots of information in there, demos we've done, and tips to help you bring your organization's cybersecurity up to the highest standards possible. And before we dig into the lesson today on cyber insurance, be sure that you check out the companion guide that goes with the course. Any tools or links that we talk about will be in there for you to review, as well as some exercises and some tools and checklists and cheat sheets to help you build out your small or mid-sized business's cybersecurity program. So let's talk about cyber insurance. And the bottom line when it comes to cyber insurance is this. Cyber attacks cost money to your company. They are very costly. For an example, the average data breach at a small or mid-sized organization costs between $36,000 and $50,000. Imagine you have a breach and you have to come up with $36,000 to $50,000 to pay for this breach, to pay for the incident response that needs to occur, to pay to replace hardware that needs replaced for whatever reason. Could your business survive having to come up with that much money over that short period of time? Furthermore, the average ransomware demand at small and mid-sized organizations is $84,000. And a great example of that was a recent ransomware attack on the city of Lafayette in Colorado just this week. So Lafayette is a city in Colorado with just 28,000, almost 29,000 people. This is not a very big town. And they were hit with ransomware within the last week and they paid $45,000 in ransomware demands to get their files back. That is how much they actually paid. When I saw this, I wondered a town or city of that size, what kind of budget are they we dealing with? When we talk about them paying $45,000, how, how, how badly did this affect them? And we don't know if insurance covered this or not, but this is a hypothetical situation that is very interesting. So I went to their website, the city of Lafayette, and I found their budget for 2020. Inside of their 2020 budget, you can see that the information technology department falls under the city administrator. And for 2020, their total budget was $1.4 million. And if they paid $45,000 to hackers, they paid 3% of their annual IT budget for 2020 to ransomware. 3% of a budget, that's a big cut. They paid a lot of money out of their IT budget. Again, hypothetically, provided this money came out of IT, they paid a lot of money to get their files back. Imagine if that $45,000 had been put towards security. How much better would their security have been? And maybe they could have prevented that cybersecurity ransomware attack to begin with. So now that you understand how costly cyber attacks can be, cyber insurance is a great way to help transfer some of that risk. And in cybersecurity and in information security in general, there's a few ways we can deal with risk. And that's really what information security is all about, is bringing that risk level of a security incident to an acceptable level. We can transfer risk, which is what cyber insurance does. We send the risk to someone else to take care of. We can mitigate the risk by putting controls in place. We can avoid the risk by taking an action that totally removes the risk equation out of that picture. And transferring that risk is what insurance is all about. We transfer the risk to the insurance company so that should something happen to us, they take the risk, they accept that risk, and they will remunerate or pay for it. And in cyber insurance, there are a few types of insurance to know about. Side note here, 
We are not an attorney. We are not financial advisors. You should contact your attorney. You should contact your financial advisor for your organization before making these choices so that you do make the right choice. We're just going to talk about how cyber insurance works very briefly. There's first party coverage, third party coverage, or should you use both? So let's dig into each of these a little bit. If you are getting cyber insurance, a few things that you're going to want to have included in that policy are data breaches, the theft of personal data, because that happens a lot, cyber attacks on data that's held by third parties or by your vendors, cyber attacks on your own network, cyber attacks no matter where they happen in the world. You don't want your insurance policy to limit these attacks are only are covered if they happen within your country, as an example. Anywhere they happen, because we are in a global technology sphere, space, if you're using Office 365, an example, your data could be in any untold number of countries around the world. So you want to be sure that your policy covers attacks that happen anywhere. You might want to include terrorist acts, acts of cyber war, insurance brokers, insurance companies have been sort of hesitant to cover these. More policies are beginning to cover them, but that's something to keep in mind. Terrorist acts can affect your cybersecurity, and that's something you are going to want to think about. You might want to be sure that your policy includes lawsuits and regu regulatory investigations. If you, say, have a HIPAA violation and OCR comes to investigate you, that, that will cost your company money. The manpower that you have to provide to this uh, taken away from revenue generating processes. And that's something you might want to include in your cyber insurance. You might want to think about coverage and excess of other types of insurance you have. You might have another insurance of some kind that would cover some aspects of security incidents and you want an extra cushion or buffer zone above that. That's something to think about. And you want to be sure that your insurance policies offers incident response activities like a breach hotline or forensics if they're required. All of that should be included in the insurance policy. Some are optional. And again, get with your legal counsel, your technical counsel to figure out which of these you want. The first category of cyber insurance is first party coverage. First party coverage protects your data, your employees, and your customers' information, not your systems. It protects the data of your customers and your employees. And this covers things like the legal counsel that is needed for determining how to respond if you have to hire an attorney or some kind of consultant, recovery and the replacement of lost or stolen data, the customer notifications, if you have to set up a call center to receive requests like, again, as an example, HIPAA requires or other regulations require, any income that is lost due to business interruption that can be covered in first party coverage. Um, any kind of crisis management and public relations that there's requires consultants, uh, notifications, press releases, any of that type of happenstance. Cyber extortion and fraud. Be careful. Sometimes this covers ransomware. Sometimes it doesn't. Be sure that you work that out with your insurance policy maker. Forensic services for an investigation. And this can cover things like fines and penalties that are related to the incident, regulatory fines, regulatory penalties that come as a result of a security incident. That is generally what you would find in a first party coverage. Third party coverage protects you from the liability if a third party brings a claim against you. And this includes things like payments to your customers who were affected by the breach, um, under regulations like the California Consumer Privacy Act, CCPA, you might have to pay your customers who were breached. We see this a lot in class action lawsuits after these huge data breaches. And depending on the size of your organization, this is something to keep in mind. This could also think, include third-party coverage, could include claims and settlements for ex those expenses that relate to lawsuits or losses from defamation, copyright, and trademark infringement, or costs for litigation and regulatory counsel, any kind of settlements, accounting costs, all of those third-party things that happen as a result of a security incident, those would fall under third-party coverage generally. So that's a very brief overview of cyber insurance. Be sure you check out the companion guide that we gave the link to before. 
There's a table in there that breaks this down to make it very simple for you to understand. And that will help you when you talk to an insurance agent, when you talk to your legal counsel to figure out what exactly do you need when it comes to cyber insurance.